This is going to be an overview of the book of Psalms. Psalms is possibly the most popular book in all of the Bible. You will find that many a Christian's favorite verse is in the book of Psalms. In Psalms, you have 150 chapters or Psalms and 2,641 verses and around 43,743 words. So you will find it covers just about everything at some point. King David is the author of most of the book. However, there are also other authors. You have Asaph, the sons of Korah, Solomon, Ethan, Moses, Hezekiah, or other writers in this book. Just like the rest of the Old Testament, you can find the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells this himself in Luke twenty four forty four. It says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. So you'll find Jesus Christ throughout the book of Psalms. You will find three different prophetic themes in the book of Psalms. Number one, you have Psalms about the tribulation. For example, in Psalm 79, 10, it says, Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. The great tribulation, which is the last three and a half years of the of of that time period coming up that people refer to as the tribulation is a time when God's people will have their blood shed and they will pray for the Lord to avenge their blood. And that's what's going on in Psalm 79, 10. And it talks about it in Revelation 6, 10, when it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So you will see these tribulation psalms throughout the book. For example, Psalms 10, verses 1 through 2, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices which they have imagined, that they have imagined. So in Psalm 10, you, you see the Antichrist pop up. The Antichrist is called that wicked in 2 Thessalonians 2. And here in Psalms 10, you see how the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. So in the tribulation, the Antichrist will cause all to receive a mark and worship him. Those who don't will be persecuted and killed. So look at the verse, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. So... You have verses like this through the book of Psalms referring to the tribulation. You also have Psalms about the second coming. For example, in Psalms 10 and verse 12, it says, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Notice when it says, Arise, O Lord. That's a second coming reference. And then you have Psalms about the millennium. In Psalms 10, 15, and 16, Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. So there you have prophesied the millennial reign when the Lord is king and the heathen perish out of his land. And then you also look at the historical view of Psalms. The historical view would have to do with things describing David's life. You'll see David described being chased by his enemies. You'll see him describe God giving him deliverance from his enemies and then praising God for delivering him from his enemies. That is the historical view. And quite possibly the most popular part of the Bible outside of John 3.16 is Psalms 23. And you can see how it would apply to David's situation historically. You can see how it would apply to the tribulation saints prophetically and then for me and you devotionally. And the Bible is written in such a way that any man from any age can pick it up and get something out of every page in the book. 
So look at Psalms 23, one of the most popular parts in all of the Bible. Psalms 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the Lord is his shepherd. It isn't the idle shepherd of Zechariah 11, 17. A Jew in the tribulation could pick up this verse and say, The Lord is my shepherd. I don't want any part of this idle shepherd. The idol shepherd is the Antichrist. Now, verse 2 of Psalms 23 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So the Lord will direct the trib saints to water they can drink. There are judgments of God brought on man during the tribulation that will affect the waters. The tribulation saint will be led to water. He will be led to still waters. God is going to take care of them against those raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Now verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So, for his name's sake. A man is going to have to choose the name of Jesus Christ in the tribulation and not the name of the beast. Verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Do a search on the shadow of death in the Bible, and you'll find it is always associated almost every time with the tribulation. Now notice it says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The tribulation, called the time of Jacob's trouble, is a time of judgment on Israel that turns into a comfort. Because the Lord whips them so hard, they realize he's the Son of God. The rod and the staff turn out to be a comfort. And like I say, the practical application for us today is obvious. When God whips us, it hurts us, but then we turn out right. We turn out being right with God after he chastens us. Hebrews 12, 7 through 11. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So you see how that could apply to us today. The Lord will take his rod and he'll chasten us. And then we turn out better. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It's a comfort to know God's still chasing you. You don't want God to be leaving you alone and letting you continue down a bad path. Now, Psalms 23, 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So the Jew in the tribulation will be fed by the Lord in the presence of his enemies round about. He's going to be running from his enemies, but God's going to preserve him and feed him. Now, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, notice it go on to talk about the millennium, where it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you don't want to approach Psalms from a devotional aspect only. You want to look at it every way you can. This makes the Bible jump off the page. It is a prophetic book. The devotional aspect will keep your grandma in the Bible. It'll keep some uh, moms in the Bible that are worried about their children. However, the average red-blooded man needs the doctrine, the prophecy, the historical aspects as well, or he will just turn you off. If you're just con constantly just using the devotional aspects of the Bible, you need to get into the doctrine of the Bible. That's what makes men get interested in the Bible. And this is why a lot of times the men don't want to go to church. The preacher just gets up and gives a little devotion 
And I'm not talking, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use that, but you need to add some of the, you need to add the doctrine in there. And if you think preaching is, is just yelling and screaming, then you've, you've missed the point. I'm talking about some preachers have watered down sermons that only give a practical look at the verse. And this isn't bad, but they never touch the doctrine. This keeps the women in the congregation because they're emotional and they're stressed out, so they get comfort from the Psalms, the devotional aspect of the Psalms, which is good. But most men are different. If you want to get men interested in the Bible then show them the prophecy. Show them the types. Show them the doctrine. Get some meat in there. Most men today, most preachers today have milk ministries. And you find out everything they're going to tell you in just a few months. So, you have the inspirational or devotional view. And this has to do with how you can devotionally apply the Psalms to you in your everyday life. Sadly, this is typically the only view the average Christian and preacher will look at. However, it is the doctrinal or prophetical view that brings the book to life. And if you look at them from all three views at once, you can really see the masterpiece for what it is. <clears throat> there are five sections in the book of Psalms. And some people believe that each different section will match one of the five books of Moses which could be true. But the sections begin at Psalms 1, and then at Psalms 42, then Psalms 73, Psalms 90, and Psalms 107. The first section from Psalm 1 through 41 focuses on the counsel to man. This could match Genesis. The second section 42 to 72 has the key thought on Israel this could match Exodus 73 through 89 talks about the sanctuary this could match the book of Leviticus 90 through 106 recounts Israel's rebellion this could match the book of Numbers Psalms 107 through 150 centers on God's word this could match Deuteronomy but this has been just a quick overview of the book of Psalms. Remember, you can get so much out of the book. Don't just look at it devotionally. Look at it how a tribulation saint might look at it. Look at it <clears throat> and find the types and pictures of Jesus Christ. Look at it and see how David is saying it from his historical viewpoint. There's so much more to it than people see. They see it just as a book that they get comfort out of, but there's so much doctrine in the book of Psalms on the second coming, the tribulation, the millennium. Just don't let the Bible become a dead book to you. Open it up. Look at it from each viewpoint, and you'll get a lot more out of it that way.